Jackie, I love food. There, I, I'm admitting it. And I can't imagine a fair without it. Kajal, I love food. I love food and I love cooking, but I love eating even more. And <laughs> Mela isn't going to leave you feeling hungry. And we're sure that you're going to have a big appetite for more after seeing our resident foodie, Yudika, in action. Hello, I'm Yudika Sujanani and welcome to the Food Mela. This is my first episode and I'm going to be preparing paneer, but paneer with a twist. Follow me. I love getting out to the goat farm just outside Joburg. The air is so fresh. Goats are such curious and intelligent animals, you can almost see it in their eyes. Hello guys. Because they're so inquisitive, they're notorious for escaping. I often use goat's milk because it's easy to digest. It has less lactose and doesn't separate into cream so easily, making it perfect for my star ingredient, paneer. I've got my milk. A quick freshen up and change and we'll get started. I've just picked up some goat's milk and I'm going to be making some goat's milk paneer today. And then to go along with that, a very quick and easy double bean curry that's going to work really well with some fresh goat's milk paneer. Now for the curry you're going to need some sunflower oil, double beans, we've got some spices mixed, red chilli, cumin, coriander, garam masala and some turmeric, salt, tomatoes, onion, ginger and garlic paste and then some cumin seeds. Now the first thing we need to do is to get that goat's milk into a pan and bring it up to the boil. So you need to stir constantly to prevent it from sticking and burning. And when you're making paneer, just remember your milk's going to be really, really hot. So when you add the vinegar, it's going to curdle immediately. If you are making paneer, try to use a paddle spoon. It works really well. You can scrape the pan really quite nicely and you won't have any burnt bits stuck to the bottom. The milk's now starting to bubble up. Just switch off the heat and pour in the vinegar. This is about 360 ml of vinegar going into 4 litres of milk. Now, use a spoon, a wooden spoon, and just gently move the milk around to get the vinegar through. And this prevents the curds from splitting too much. You want the curd to stay quite thick and chunky and not really fine. That wouldn't be great for paneer. And the liquid separated from the curd. Now you can leave this to stand for a bit. I'm just going to pop it into a strainer. Use a slotted spoon and scoop out the curd and place that into a strainer. This works a lot better than pouring the whole liquid through a cloth. This is goat's milk, but you could also use cow's milk for this as well and just follow exactly the same recipe. Paneer is eaten most as a substitute for meat and it could be cooked in, in curries, it could be used as a filling in pies, as a stuffing, so you can get quite creative, even make kebabs out of them. Now just press the paneer down with the back of a spoon and work out that excess moisture. This makes pressing the cheese quite easy. So just pop that onto a dish towel. You can use a muslin cloth if you like, but I'm just using an ordinary dish towel. And just press that together into a patty or a cake almost. Now wrap it up quite tightly in the dish towel. Leave this on a draining board and I'm going to use the same pot with the liquid in just as a weight over the paneer to squeeze out all that excess moisture. While the paneer is being pressed, I'm going to start on my double bean curry. I've preheated a pan, in goes some oil, sunflower oil going in, and then some cumin seeds. They almost splatter immediately. And then in goes some chopped onion. Stir that through and saute until this onion's light golden in colour. That should take about two to three minutes. Now add some salt as well. That brings out the sweetness in the onion. I'd say about a teaspoon and a bit going in. Now in goes some ginger and garlic paste. Stir that through. Next in goes the spices. This is red chilli, cumin, coriander, garam masala and a bit of turmeric as well. Going in on the side of the pan. 
And next go the beans. And these are beautiful in colour and I love the creamy texture of them as well. Now in goes some water. Lower the heat and simmer until the beans are tender. I'd say about 45 minutes. These beans are now tender. Let's pop in some tomato. Give that a stir and simmer for about two to three minutes until that tomato softens. Now for the paneer. The paneer has been pressed and that's what it looks like. So slice through, just neatening up the edges. I normally use the off-cut paneer as a filling for my pies and as a stuffing in some vegetables. Now I just slice this into cubes. Now if you find your paneer is too soft, just unwrap it and leave it in the refrigerator for a few minutes so that it firms up. That's the paneer done. The tomatoes have softened in the bean curry. Now we add some curry leaves and I prefer adding these at the end because they retain that flavour and aroma. Next, let's pop the paneer into the sauce. And just remember, you could also fry this if you like before you add it to a curry. I prefer it unfried, just watching those calories. Just stir that through and warm the paneer on a low heat. Now you can also flavour up your paneer with some cumin seeds or even green chilli when you're making up a batch. But the paneer here is going to soak up the flavours from this sauce, which is that lovely red chilli, cumin, coriander, garam masala and curry leaves of course. Lastly, in goes the coriander. The beans are tender, the paneer is warm through. That's my paneer and bean curry done.